Today we are going to begin our study of solving and graphing equations in two variables. Now before we begin, there's a couple things that you need to get and to be prepared for this lesson. First of all, you are going to need graph paper. Secondly, you're going to need a pencil. And of course, you're going, if we graph, you're going to need a straight edge. Now you can just grab a ruler, but if you don't have a ruler handy, really anything that is straight can be used, okay? So if you need those materials, stop the video and go get those and come back and get ready. Now that you're ready to go, make sure you put a title at the top of your piece of paper to solve and graph equations in two variables and put today's date. Now we're going to begin by comparing where we've been and where we're going. Now the very first chapter of this year, we studied solving one variable equation. So for example, x plus 3 equals 5. Now I know that's very simplified from what we've been doing, but if you look at this equation, there's one variable, and the variable is x. And to solve this equation, we would subtract 3 from both sides using the subtraction property of equality, and then our solution would be x equals 2. Okay? Now if I wanted to graph this solution, I would graph it on a number line. Not that we did this, but I know you've done this before. And at 2, I would put a point indicating that this is the solution to the problem. And then we could check by substituting 2 in the original problem. Now for these problems, on your last test, you remember, you could either have one solution. For example, this example has the solution of 2. Remember, sometimes there was no solution. And then also there were cases where we had infinite solutions, or all real numbers, or as the book calls it, identity. Okay, now that's where we've been. Now this chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to look at equations that have two variables. So let me write a simple two-variable equation, x plus y equals 5. Now you notice the obvious difference at this point is we have an x and a y, two variables. Now the reason why we were talking about function, functions, domain, and range um, just this last week is because when we have two variables, we always will have a domain and a range. And typically the x represents the domain and the y represents the range, the input and the output. Now for this function, it's a little different. If I want to solve this function, you say to yourself, what two numbers will give me a sum of five? So think of that. Okay, Jack, I heard you. Jack said, if we let x be 0 and y be 5, that would be a solution. Oh, Emery, good job. 1, 4, that would be a solution. Oh, right, Jordan, 2, 3. So you can see we could keep coming up with infinite number of solutions. Now, if I just made a quick sketch of this, 0, 5. Now, make sure you're writing this example down with me. If you haven't, then you need to pause the video and go back and write this example. So you can see then we have formed a line. And on this line, every point on the line represents a solution to this equation. So you can see we have infinite number of solutions that would make this true. That's our introduction to what we'll be doing in this chapter. Now, to begin with, we are going to be studying a specific type of two variable equation, and it's called the standard form of a linear equation. Now, a linear equation is an equation, of course, that makes sense, whose graph is a line. Okay, that's not rocket science, huh? And with a linear equation, in the variables x and y, if we use those two variables, they can be re rewritten in this form. Excuse me, sorry, assembly. Where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are both not zero. Well, why is, that, why is that said? Well, let's say A was 0, and let's say B was 0, and it equaled a constant 5. Well, 0 times X is just 0, and 0 times Y is just 0, so 0 does not equal 5, so then this would not work. So that's why A and B cannot both be 0. And also, A and B and C, we like to write them as integers. That's called proper standard form. Just like when you write a sentence, you use a capital letter to start off the beginning of your sentence. 
Okay, well, let's look at some examples. Here's an example of an equation written in standard form. Notice there are two variables, x and y. And according to standard form, 3 represents the coefficient a, b represents the coefficient b of b, and 21 is the constant. Notice I use the word coefficient when I have a number being multiplied by a variable, coefficient. And this is called the constant because there is no variable. Okay, now the directions here say, state whether each ordered pair is a solution. So let's check out the first ordered pair, 7, 0. So the value of x will be 7, and the value of y will be 0. So we have 3 times x minus 5 times y is equal to 21. Now I have to verify whether this makes a true statement or not. And it does make a true statement. So therefore, 7, 0 is a solution. Now I would like you on your paper to verify whether or not negative 2, negative 3 is a solution to the two variable equations. So you may want to stop the video and then continue when you're done. Here's another equation. This is example number 2. And this equation also is written in standard form. The coefficient of the variable a, of the, I'm sorry, of the variable m is 3, that is the value a. The coefficient of the variable n is negative 2, that would be the value of b. And our constant is 6. So yes, that meets the requirements of standard form. a, b, and c are integers. Now we need to verify whether these two points make the equation true. But hold the boat, hold the ship or train, something like that. But we're using m and n, not x and y. How does that work? Well, mathematicians, you know, they're not too creative, except for they like to try a lot of different variables. But what they do is when they write them as an ordered pair, it always goes in alphabetical order. So since m comes before n in the alphabet, m will represent the first value. So in this example, m will be 0 and n will be 3. So let's test it. So 3 times the value of m is 0, minus 2 times the value of n is 3, equals to 6. So 0 minus 6 equals 6. So does negative 6 equal 6? No, it does not. So this is not a solution. Now will you please check to see whether 5 thirds and negative 1 half solutions to this equation? Pause the video and then come back when you're done. Okay, now we are given another equation in standard form here, and your job is to solve each equation if x and y are whole numbers. Now remember, whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so let's test off. Let's start with 0 if x is 0. So I'm going to show my work here. 2 times 0 plus 5y equals 10. Well, we know 2 times 0 is 0, so 5y equals 10. So therefore, y would equal 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. Now let's check the next whole number, 1. Okay, give myself some work, room to work. So now we have 2 times 1 plus 5 times y equals 10. Well, we have 2 plus 5y equals 10. Subtract 2 from both sides, 5y equals 8. But when I divide by 5, I get 8 fifths for the value of y. Now according to this directions, I want to find when x and y are whole numbers. 8 fifths is not a whole number. So therefore, when x is 1, y is not a whole number. So this will not be a whole number solution to this equation. Now we have to try 2. 2 times 2 plus 5y equals 10. Now I'm going to go a little quicker through this. 4 plus 5y equals 10. Subtract 4 from both sides. 5y equals 6. And we can see right away 6 fifths is not a whole number. So therefore, when x is 2, I do not get a whole number solution for y. Phew! How much farther must I go? 2 times 3 plus 5y equals 10. Well, I get 6. Well, I can see right away again, I am not going to get a whole number for y. When I subtract 6, I get 4. Two times four. Are you getting tired of this yet? Hopefully you'll start to understand what's going on. So I get eight plus five y equals ten. 
Well, I subtract 8 and I get 2. That is not a solution either. Now I go to 5. 2 times 5 plus 5y equals 10. Oh, finally. 10 plus 5y equals 10. So 5y equals 0. So therefore, y will equal 0. So at 5, 0. Now, are there any other whole number solutions? Well, no. I can conclude that there are not. The reason why is that I started off with x equal to 0, and I found that y would equal 2. And then I continued all the way through 1, 2, 3, 4, but notice then I went to 5 and got 5, 0. And I can assume now, or that if I tried 6, what would happen is, notice these numbers are decreasing. So if I decrease from 0, I'm going to go into negative numbers. Let's see, 2 times 6 plus 5y equals 10. So I subtract 12 from both sides, and yes, that was a correct assumption. 5y equals negative 2. So when I divide by 5, I'm going to get a negative value, and whole numbers are not negative. So those are the two whole number solutions for this equation. Now your job on your paper is to find the whole number solutions for this equation written in standard form. Pause the video and come back again. Okay, now we have a word problem. Yes. Okay, first of all, what is the question in this word problem? And I'm going to use, question will be signified by a squiggly. How many of each can they buy? That's the question. And then I can see I'm looking for trees, spruce trees, okay? Some were blue spruce and the rest were green spruce. That's the question. Let's clarify the facts. I'm going to use red underline for that. Linda and Bill spent $100, okay? Some were blue spruce price at 20 and the rest were green spruce flat price 10 How many can they buy? Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and let's pick a strategy and solve. Well, if I were to look at these facts, I realize that I've got two different types of trees. Now, since I'm learning about two variables, you know what? I can use write a two-variable equation. So let's let x, well, let's make it more meaningful. Let's let b equal blue spruce trees, and let's let g equal green spruce trees. Okay? Now, we know that the blue spruce trees are $20 each, and we know that the green spruce trees are $10 each, and we know that we've spent a total of $100. So now I have written an equation, but I need to figure out how many of each. Oops, you see my mistake? I hope you did. It was 10G, right? There we go. How many of each type of tree can I buy? So we're going to do this just like we did the previous example. If I bought zero blue spruce, so this is going to represent blue. Ooh, that does not come out very well. Blue. And this will represent green spruce. So if I buy zero blue, then that would be, this then would be covered up. So 10 times 10 is 100. Then I'd get 10 green spruce. Okay. Then if I bought, let's see, could I buy one? No, because then I'd get, oh, one. Oh, yeah, one would work, huh? So if I go 20 times 1 plus 10G equals 100, subtract 20, I get 80. So that means I would buy, excuse me, buy 8. So 1, 8. That works. Okay. What about 2? 20 times 2. Oh, this is much simpler than the last one I did. So I subtract 40, and I get 60. So G equals 6. I'm going to run out of room at this rate, huh? So now if I just take this, and I replace it with 3, that's 60. Subtract 60, and g equals 40, so g would be 4. Okay, and then we try 4. 20 times 4 is 80. Subtract 80, 10g equals 20. So when I have 4, then I have 2. Ooh, I'm almost at the bottom, huh? And then let's say if I bought 5 blue spruce, that's 100. Subtract it from 100, I get 0. 
So G would be zero. So if I bought five, oh, can I put this in? Sorry, guys. Five, zero. So those are all the possible combinations of trees that I can buy. Okay. Now, last of all, last idea we're going to talk about is what if you're given an equation in standard form and you need to graph it? Okay. Now, to graph, we know it's going to be a line because it's linear. And we know that a, b, and c are all integers. So let us, just like we've been doing, let's find some whole number order pairs that would make this work. We'll start off with 0. If x is 0, then what would y be? Well, y would be 4. Yes, I have one ordered pair. Let's try what if x is 1. So I subtract 2, y would be 2. Yes. And then, let's do, what if x is 2? Okay, I subtract 4, y is 0. I have three ordered pairs. Now I can graph those three ordered pairs. 0, 4, 1, 2, and 2, 0. So you can see now, let me use my nifty dipsy line tool. And there would be the line of this. Now remember earlier we said this is infinite solutions, so I would need to draw an arrow on that. Now, we're going to practice this a lot more in class, but I'd like you to do one on your own, and that's x plus y equals 6. Would you please find three ordered pairs and graph those three ordered pairs on your paper? Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday.